Abbott Labs reporting Q3 results this morning, beating on the top and bottom lines and raising its full year EPS guidance. The stock higher today, but recently hit 52 week lows on investor concerns about the impact weight loss drugs like Wegovy and Ozempic might have on the business. Joining us now for an exclusive interview is Abbott Chairman and CEO Robert Ford. Robert, good to see you. So big results, and you made a very interesting case, numbers-based case on the call, I thought, uh, about why the excitement, or lack thereof, if you're looking at medical device companies over GLP-1s, might be overdone. Well, make the case. Well, John, it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a great quarter for us, and uh, I would say uh, these are great drugs. Let's start off with that. They've got great, uh, uh, great outcomes, and we've seen that. I think over the last couple of, uh, couple of months here, there seems to be this debate about trying to pin you know, these treatments versus you know, med medical device or med tech products, and uh, we just don't see that. And obviously, there's a question on the future of the total available markets as these, uh, as these drugs grow. But we didn't see that. Uh, we didn't see that. Uh, Libre, our glucose monitoring business, had record sales this quarter, $1.4 billion, up 28 percent. Our cardiovascular procedures were, were up 10 percent. And I su suspect that as the earnings of other companies uh, report, I think you'll see kind of similar, uh, similar growth numbers and, and some of the, those fears kind of going away. And uh, I would say the other thing is we looked at our glucose, uh, we looked at data from Freestyle Libre users. And so a lot of them were using GLP-1s. And what we, what we discovered was users that were using Libre and GLP-1s, they were actually using more of both of the products. So they were using more sensors for Libre and they were using more, uh, more GLP-1s. They're being more adherent to the GLP-1s. So I think this is actually a story of you know, both products uh, in combination providing great outcomes and outcome benefits. So then the question was always the long term, like if you think five, 10 years out. And, you know, what I was trying to show today was this mismatch between revenue and patient uptake. You know, if you look at the consensus forecast for these drugs in the next five years, they get to about 60 to $70 billion. Mm. Uh, that equates to about 10 to 15 million people on these drugs. When you look at diabetes, there's half a billion people in the world cardiovascular disease, another half a billion. So, so it's still a small percent of what that total available market is. Uh, okay. So, yeah. I also want to ask you about um, elective surgeries and, and some of the other areas in general. MitraClip, which uh, has to do with uh, heart procedures, uh, it, it had been driven by international growth for you over the last few quarters, but you're seeing a, a U.S. rebound now. I believe you said it was up 5%. What are some of the mechanics there, and are they going to continue, even particularly in the U.S.? Yeah, we, we, we saw a little bit of a slowdown. I mean, my trip in the U.S. was growing, you know, double digits. And then, obviously, when COVID hit, uh, you know, that kind of slowed down. And as, as we're now coming back uh, to normal procedures, you know, some procedures are, are, let's say, a little easier and faster to start up. Uh, MitraClip, given the imaging and some of the uh, some of the pre-op work that's necessary, uh, there's a lot, little bit more work there. So we're starting to see that now bounce, bounce back. Uh, it was pretty much flat, I would say, in the second half of 2022, and now it's starting to get into mid-single-digit growth. And I think that'll start to kind of move, given the, uh, the incredible uh, outcomes that that product provides, uh, especially with people with uh, mitral regurgitation. So. Uh, so that's done very well. But I'd say overall, uh, you know, cardiovascular procedures, uh, not only in this country, but around the world, are growing. Our business was up 15 percent uh, in cardiovascular uh, or med device and total med devices. So that, that's I think that's uh, that's going to see a trend that we're going to see continuing uh, going into next year. Robert, you also uh, had sales increase 18 percent nutrition, pediatric nutrition, which speaks to baby formula up 25 percent in the quarter as you continue to recapture that lost market share coming off of the shortages last year. Walk me through what you've been able to do to bring formula back online and make sure that we don't see recalls and shortages like we did last year. Yeah, well, listen, our focus is always on, on market and market supply. You know, our quality policy here, Morgan, is we, like, we, we build products as if they're intended for our own family members. So throughout last year, the team did an incredible job about bringing back supply back to the market. We use our entire uh, manufacturing network to be able to do that. I think you see shelves now pretty much stocked. Uh, and our market share is, is about 90 percent back to where we were pre-recall. Uh, uh, pre uh, regarding prevention, I mean, listen, we're the only U.S. company right now that is making investments to add a
additional capacity for infant formula in this country. We announced a half a billion dollar investment in Bowling Green to bring a new uh, a new manufacturing site to this country. And we've also committed to increasing our inventory levels. So, uh, you know, we're working really hard. Uh, the team's done an okay. incredible job over the last 12 months. I, I want to quickly ask one on diagnostics, excluding COVID testing. It was up 10 percent. How much of that was because of the blood transfusion business and, and how much of it was other? I'd say about 75 percent was other. Uh, it was nice to see uh, the blood transfusion business start to see those donations uh, come back up. I mean, we use a lot of big data to be able to see where there could potentially be shortages. So we were a little bit concerned uh, end of last year. But it's great to see now, um, you know, those uh, those donations pop back up again. Uh, and I think the country's better off for it. So okay. uh, but again, a lot of growth and routine diagnostic testing that we're seeing not only in the U.S., but around the world.